Welcome to episode 72 of the Arthur Man LV Exhibition, and today we are taking on Stevie Ray. One, well, the other half of Harlem Heat. I was about to say one half, but anyway, Stevie Ray, just like his brother Booker, yes, they're brothers, basically had his fair share of time in the limelight. As a matter of fact, Stevie Ray had disbanded Harlem Heat on two occasions. The first time he disbanded Harlem Heat is when he joined the NWO. As a matter of fact, I do believe his fourth alternate costume is the NWO colors that he wore. Not only did he join the NWO, he ended up becoming the leader, but was eventually kicked out for Scott Steiner and Jeff Jarrett. Now, well I wouldn't say kicked out for Scott Steiner, they eventually disbanded and then Scott Steiner and Jeff Jarrett started it all over again. Thankfully, Stevie Way wasn't a part of Jeff Jarrett's NWO. Unlike what I said in the uh, 69th episode. But, he was, however, a part of the Harlem Heat 2000. Yes, there was an alternate version of Harlem Heat. A version of Harlem Heat where he went power crazy and eventually kicked Booker T out of the group and then brought in Ahmed Johnson and renamed him Big T and then beat Booker T for the rights of his name. It was a pointless ongoing feud and one of Vince Russo's worst as he literally broke up Harlem Heat in the most pathetic of manner. Not to take anything away from Ahmed Johnson, because he is a pretty damn good wrestler. But, let's be honest, people. Uh, Stevie Ray is... You gotta be kidding me. Not again. Well, let me turn my attention to the Giant. And he too joined NWO Hollywood. As a matter of fact... For those of you who don't know who the Giant is, we all know him as the Big Show. And yes, the Giant and Stevie Ray were on the same faction when Stevie Ray joined the NWO. But he joined Hollywood, not Wolfpack. But see, Hulk Hogan purposely made the NWO fight amongst themselves when he told them all that they had the potential to become the, lead, the next leader of the NWO. Now back on to the subject of Harlem Heat 2000 and why it's so bad. Sorry to jump subjects there people, but the reason why Harlem Heat 2000 was so bad was because Vince Russo just all of a sudden decided it was a good idea to make Stevie Ray a heel. I mean, Stevie Ray sometimes have, an, have part of that idea. Some of the wrestlers come and take their ideas to Vince Russo. Other times, Vince Russo does things on his own. Oh, I tried to jump, but I missed. Anyway. I missed again. Nice. But, Stevie Ray ended up just getting power hungry and kicked Booker T and his second manager Midnight out. And for those of you who don't know who Midnight is, Midnight is Charmel. No, wait, I think Midnight was Charmel. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Midnight is Charmel. Booker T's eventual wife. But he kicked both her and him out of the group. You want to know what make things even worse? He ended up... Yeah, that's Stevie Ray's finisher, by the way. 110th Street Slam. What made this whole feud with him, Booker T, and Midnight so bad is the fact that 
Stevie Ray purposely attacked Midnight. Well, according to the storyline, anyway. And he couldn't even beat her while armed with a slapjack. This is Vince Russo's writing at its finest, people. I'm not gonna lie. That's just freaking ridiculous. But other successes, Stevie Ray was a television champion, and he was a 10-time WCW champion. I do believe he won independent titles and independent circuits, but that's all I know about. And man, is he tenacious. That's one thing I can't take away from Stevie Ray. Even though Booker T's nimble and agile, Stevie Ray is just strong and full of endurance, man. They come with some of the most deadliest combinations that was even used by some of the superstars in WWE. Like, for instance, the Big Apple, where Stevie Ray holds somebody in a reverse bear hug, no, hurts somebody in the bear hug position while Booker T kicks him in the mouth. Eventually, Deuce and Domino would acquire that finisher. And the backbreaker leg drop combination that they call the Harlem leg drop. Eventually, Steve Blackman and Al Snow would use that finisher, as a matter of fact. Trust me, these guys influence a lot of tag team moves. They also had their own variation of the Doomsday device. But still, none of that matters because Booker T, oh, I got him right in the head. Booker T ain't here to save Stevie Ray. As a matter of fact, the Big Show is out here and, well, the Giant, basically. And he wasn't too much of help. And yes, that is a briefcase you see in my hand. Oh, man, and I dropped it. Oh, well. Curses. I'm gonna get the timing down right on that jump. Eventually. Probably not in this series of episodes. Anyway. Stevie Ray eventually retired, which is why nobody's seen him. But funny thing, he actually inducted Booker T in the Hall of Fame. While I just inducted Stevie Ray in the Hall of Pain. Yeah, that's right. I made that reference. Anyway. That is it for WCW vs. NWO in this part. In the next part, we will continue to go closer and closer to Bill Goldberg in, 70, in episode 73. This is RVMan985, and one other thing I almost forgot. The infamous promo with Harlem Heat when they're about to take on the Giant, ironically, and Lex Luger. See you guys next time. We take what we want, and after we take Lex Luger and the child, we want the gold, sucker! Hulk Hogan, we coming for you, nigga! I should point out for the record, Stevie Ray, look at this. Take a look.